one psyche coach where you're looking at performance. Um, so below that, at the state level, South in Victoria, we had Breeze Rides, which was a social riding program. So we train up female ride leaders, get them to run rides in their local area. Um, so they're you know running maybe between three to five rides a week with probably eight to 12 participants. Um, we had all the traditional products that are on offer. So uh, the activities the clubs do, uh, you know, road racing, track racing, mountain bike, cyclocross, um, we're getting reasonable levels of intake from females in those programs, but um, I think probably fair to say, Mark, that what we're getting was people coming in, but not necessarily continuing within the clubs. There was some good success, but I think there was a whole another strategy required around engaging more people in cycling. As you know, cycling is interesting as a sport because you've got that whole sports side of it, but I mean, everyone's got a bike. Everyone can ride a bike. Everyone's had one at some, one stage in their life. And you've got Bicycle Network in Victoria as well, um, who've got something like 50, 60,000 members and are a powerful advocacy group. Um, they also offer a social um, membership, which gives you ride insurance, as does Cycling Victoria's recreational membership. So it's actually a competing product as a cyclist. Uh, you can get a very compatible product from two different organisations. So obviously at Cycling Victoria, the plan was to try and tap into that market of recreational riders. Um, there's also She Rides, which was Cycling Australia's uh, national program, um, in the mix as well. So that's just to present a bit of a picture of, of what was happening at the time. Um, so we had some conversations with Jacinta Costello. So as I said earlier, she was a ride leader. She was looking to start a small business. Uh, she came to us and we just had a bit of a meeting. We said, you know, how can we help you? How can you help us? And the way I see it, it's just a really good story of solving each other's problems um, and coming to an agreement which worked out for great outcomes for both of us. So at cycling, some of the problems we had connecting with the right target market, as I said before, most participants were male, so our database is not speaking to the people that we want to connect with. Finding appropriate coaches, um, a lot of the traditional coaches in the sport, probably not necessarily the best people you want to engage that less active market, so we need to get out to some other people uh, and work with them. Uh, finding more pathways from riding to getting a recreational or potentially a racing membership, but if people want to stay at recreational, that's obviously completely fine. Uh, a greater presence in local communities. Um, you know, we had Mark, we had two other staff, uh, myself, two others in the team. So, we're working across the entire state. We can't do everything ourselves. We need other people that can work with us to connect the communities. Uh, and on top of all that, we're just trying to make participation more sustainable. So what we found for ladies back on your bike uh, with Jacinta's business was what she needed is the coaching qualifications, which she received uh, as free training through the Breeze Rides program, affordable insurance. So that was something really big. She came to us and she was paying uh, just direct to an insurance company. Um, I'm not sure what the, the fee was, but it was a huge amount. And as essentially a startup business, she couldn't afford it, but she has to have it um, to lead the rides. So um, that was something that she was in need of, as well as IT support. So obviously setting up a registration system, payments, all that stuff can be challenging for a small business. Credibility. She was looking for um, you know respect from a state statewide body, which is something that, that we could provide. Um, and sometimes just equipment. So um, we had a bunch of bikes. We were literally sometimes just having a come meet at the office, go around the back of the village, over the shipping container, get a few bikes, lend her those for a couple of weeks. So she's got a whole range of problems. We've got a whole range of problems. Um, and basically everything that we're looking for here, she ticked off. So. She's an older woman herself. She's always been a recreational cyclist. She knows the target market. She was very, very good at engaging them. So I think that was really the key, is that what we probably found we were lacking in actually engaging people, she was a natural at it. She did it really, really well. So that's ticked off, that connection with the target market, finding the appropriate coach, having the presence in a particular local area, as well as having someone who can support people to get back on the bike, start riding regularly and potentially make it a habit and take out that social membership. 
uh, what we were able to provide for her was everything that she needed. So we were able to provide much, much cheaper insurance um, throughout our setup, um, just by paying us a, you know, a fairly small, much more affordable fee. She was able to tap into our registration systems. Um, we gave her the title of you know, preferred supplier for the Bayside area, preferred cycling coach in business, as well as the equipment support. So in many ways, this is just a good case study of, of a really good partnership where um, we've got a whole bunch of problems, she's got a whole bunch of problems, and we solved each other's. So some of the outcomes from this, uh, as I said, we just did quite a simple agreement. It was not that technical, didn't go to lawyers, anything like that. Um, just a, an agreement to work together to pay a small fee. Um, as a result, in the first 12 months, she had about 250 um, participants sign up to her programs. Uh, whereas when we first spoke to her, I think she had about 10 to 20. Uh, and Martin informed me to say this, she's currently got 803 participants. Uh, and that's been in sort of three to four years. So I think that just that growth in numbers was not something we were going to achieve through being out there ourselves running programs. So I think it was a really good outcome for the sport. Um, the other thing Mark did also inform me yesterday is that um, Cycling so now looking at actually incorporating her business as an affiliate. So I think that's interesting. So to sort of change that model from all the clubs being incorporated volunteer-led clubs uh, to having an actual small business affiliate to Cycling Victoria, and as a result, anyone who signs up with her at 800 automatically become members of Cycling. Is that fair to say, Mark? Not quite. Um, so she, her business would be the affiliate member? Yep. Her, so that would give her full membership rights without voting rights. However, her participants would still need to go Still need to take out membership. Yeah, their own membership. Yeah. Um, but I think what's important for Cycling Vic in that case is that they're more likely to go to to that organisation for the membership right versus Bicycle Network, which, as I said, is a huge competitor for cycling in that space. So the aim out of that partnership is to engage more members. Yeah, as an affiliate, that. this yeah. model was good to start with. They're moving into an affiliate member position where able to find better service. Yeah, yeah. So it's still evolving as time goes on. Yeah. Um, so a few tips what I learned out of this, um, you know, I think a lot of coaches we find working in sports, um, and I think there was some talk about this in that table before, um, a lot of the coaches are those sport loyalists, if you look at the Sport Commission's market segmentations, as I'm sure a lot of you have. Um, we're, we're often dealing with people who, who love the sport, are passionate about the sport, um, but when we're looking at, at social participation, um, we're just looking at good instructors, with people who, who know the right touch points, who can be a good mentor for people, who can be friendly and be welcoming. They don't need to be people who've grown up with the sport. So I think there's a great opportunity to engage coaches in all these programs uh, from people outside of that segment. Um, and I think you know, there's, there's certainly a lot of people that fit in the categories of, um, I think it was ponderers and sideline sportsters. So there's people who are interest in the sport but just aren't involved in traditional club structures that have always sort of been watching from the side, that might play social sport themselves, that are quite active. Just engaging those people as coaches I think is a huge opportunity. Aligning goals, really, really important. I think that was the key um, in this example was that um, we essentially wanted the same goal of getting more women active um, and we worked out those technical parts and it allowed us to work together more effectively. Um, looking for economies of scale, so you know we've got an insurance platform, we've got IT platforms, we've got marketing support we can provide. So bringing that business in to provide that support rather than her having to generate all of that on her own as a startup is really important. Um, and just that credibility, I think you know all of your state associations or the RSA is the main body regionally. Um, your authority provides a lot of credibility for people looking to work in this area. So. I think that's something really important that you can go to people and say you're the authorised cycling coach or the authorised gymnastics or cricket or tennis or basketball. Uh, I think that's really important and powerful for people. And just providing excellent customer service. So uh, you're forming a partnership. It's really important that you treat them uh, almost as a customer and always friendly and welcoming and making sure you're looking after their needs. 
I think that goes both ways. If you get that relationship working really well, then they're in a good position to get out there and do what they do best, which is engage that local community.